Mondays are always a little sweeter when the Red Sox sweep, and that's exactly what happened this weekend as the Red Sox swept the Oakland Athletics Friday through Sunday. Welcome to the Locked On Red Sox podcast. I am your host, Nessens Lauren Campbell. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. So today's episode is going to focus on Sunday's game. I did an episode earlier today that focused on Friday and Saturday's game, but today we're going to talk about Rich Hill, Franchi Cordero, and just the Red Sox hopefully getting back on track as they go into a series against the Los Angeles Angels, who have been struggling mightily lately. We also will give you an update on Chris Sale in segment two, and as always, end this show with the Mental Health Minute. So let's get right to it. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, Sunday's win was a big one for the Red Sox. They defeated the Athletics 5 to 2 to earn the sweep. And not only that, they moved to 500 on the season for the first time since April 7th. And if the season were to end today, they are officially in a postseason spot that third wild card moving ahead of the Angels, who seemingly just don't know how to win anymore. They have lost 11 straight, but Boston now has won 17 of their last 25 games, dating back to May 10th. So they have seemed to hit a bit of a groove here, and whether it's May into June and a new month and carrying May's momentum into June or just kind of finally figuring it out, Who knows what it is, but Red Sox fans probably are pretty happy. And Franchi Cordero, we talked about him in Monday's episode, Monday's earlier episode, about just how he's done such a 180. We talked about Nick Pavetta doing a 180, but so has Franchi. He continued to impress Sunday. He had a three-run home run in the sixth inning that kind of broke the game open. He went one for four on the afternoon with three RBI. And now Cordero has 15 RBI and nine runs scored in his last 15 games. So clearly he's done something right. He's He got back to Worcester after his first unsuccessful stint with the Red Sox last year and just really started working on things. And Alex Cora, after Sunday's game, said that it's a lot about pitch recognition. He said he's been disciplined not afraid of striking out or swinging and missing. That ball was demolished. He's put in work, and there's a reason he's getting at-bats because he's contributing on a daily basis. Yes, he 100% is. And I know when he was called up, he was doing really well in Worcester. And that kind of seemed to be the case with him. When he did get sent down to Worcester in 2021, he was doing well there, and he was hitting the ball well. He seemed to be seeing the ball much better than at the major league level. And the same thing happened to begin the season in Worcester with the Woo Sox. And when he got called up, it just seemed to transfer. And it just seemed to be everything that Red Sox fans were hoping Franchi would be. And he's done really well. He, Like Alex Cora said, he's contributing. And he's getting good at bats. He's seeing the ball well, the pitch recognition. And it's clear he's so much more confident at the plate than he has been since last season. And I think that speaks to just kind of the player he is to go back to Worcester, work on some things, not get too discouraged about, will I come back to Boston? What can I do to kind of get back on track? He worked his butt off and was determined to get back to Boston, and he did. And he's continuing to prove why he doesn't want to go anywhere. And I don't think there's any talk about sending him back down, but if there ever comes a point, it's it's going to be difficult. Alex Cora is going to have a lot of reasons not to send him down. And speaking of people who were recalled from Worcester, Sharon Duran was recalled over the weekend because Jackie Bradley Jr. went on paternity leave because his wife Erin is giving birth or, or has given birth to their third child. So a big congratulations to them. And he did well as well Sunday. He showed off his speed by scoring from second on a shallow Raphael Devers single to make it a one nothing game. I mean, we can talk about his speed 
every single day. He is so fast. And if you ever get the chance to watch him in person, you absolutely have to because just watching how fast he is, lightning fast in real life, is just absolutely insane. And again, he showed off his speed by scoring from second on what, I don't know, say 95% of other MLB players, they'd probably not even score from second, but Duran is confident in his speed. The Red Sox are confident in his speed. And he helped set the tone early for the Red Sox. And Raphael Devers, of course, he had the RBI for Duran or on, on the single that scored Duran. And then he hit a solo opposite field home run to make it 5-1 in the eighth inning, just to kind of give them some insurance. So Franchi's home run, his three-run home run tie, uh, broke the 1-1 one, one tie. And Raphael Devers just gave them a little more insurance in the eighth, Devers was the only member of the Red Sox starting nine to get two hits. He got on base three times, and he continues to prove that he's an elite player. He's an elite bat in this lineup, and he continues game in and game out to just show that he is the real deal here at the plate. And as good as the offense was on Sunday, the pitching and Rich Hill was just as good. Rich Hill, really nice to see him get back in the win column and start a strong game because it's, he's kind of struggled since coming off the COVID list. He went six plus innings. He retired 16 straight batters, gave up three hits, one earned run, no walks, which we love to see and struck out five. And I think Rich Hill really needed the start after a three game stretch in which he went 0-2 with a 982 ERA, obviously not ideal. And he, during that 0-2 start, he had his worst start of the season a week from a week ago today in Baltimore, where he gave up six earned runs in four innings of work. Obviously, we do not want to see that from our starting pitching, especially when he's been okay. He was fine before he went on the COVID list and just was kind of struggling to get back in the groove. And Sunday kind of showed that he can get right back to it. And it helped the bullpen. And he just gave the Red Sox everything he could in order to help them win. According to MLB.com, a lot of Hill's success could have been attributed to his cutter because he threw it nine times and seven of those nine times were for strikes. And it's not a pitch he uses very often. And according to MLB, he has thrown it less than 1% of the time this season. But after the game, he said it's been here and there for the last 20 years of his career. So he does see a little humor in it, but it was nice to see him kind of have success with that cutter, especially a pitch that he does not throw very often. Coming up in our second segment of the Locked On Red Sox podcast, we're going to continue talking about the starting pitching and just how good they've been for the Red Sox their last time through the rotation and give the update on Chris Sale. But first, I want to tell you about Athletic Greens and AG1 because this is a product that I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because I wanted more energy in the mornings. Who doesn't want more energy, especially now that it's summer, the weather is getting warmer. You want that energy throughout the day. Now I've been on it for a few weeks and I love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It's got that kind of mild tropical taste and I actually look forward to taking it each morning. So what is this stuff exactly? It's one delicious scoop of AG1. You're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, and aging all of those things. So like I said, I started taking AG1 to get more energy. It's something I take right before my morning coffee and I'm ready to start my day. And it's lifestyle friendly. So if you if you eat a keto diet, paleo, you're vegan, you're dairy free or gluten free, AG1 will not interfere with that. They contain less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, none of those nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. It also supports better sleep quality and recovery, supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. 
Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. We here at Locked on Red Sox have an important favor to ask you because we've put together a survey so we can learn more about our listeners and what they like and make your favorite Locked on podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like, maybe what you don't like about the Locked on podcast. So go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey right now to get started and it won't take you very long and everyone that completes the survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 100 Ticketmaster gift cards to take your audience survey go to lockedonpodcasts.com slash survey thank you for your help so the starting pitching particularly the last time through the starting five has been really really good for the Red Sox and just how good you might ask well according to Red Sox notes JP Long Red Sox notes on Twitter Michael Waka, Garrett Whitlock, Nate Ovaldi, Nick Pavetta, and Rich Hill combined combined to record a .29 ERA during their last turn through the rotation, and they also threw a combined 30 and two-thirds innings, allowing one earned run and striking out 23. So I think those numbers speak for themselves. I think that the starting pitching truly has found a groove here in, in June and even through May. I think that they, everyone just kind of needed to put April behind them, get out of April, and start the season in May. It seems but that's what everyone has been doing. And we can't say enough about Nate Evaldi. We can't say enough about Nick Pavetta. Everyone has been doing their job as a starting pitcher. And going into the season, there was a lot of questions around this starting rotation. We didn't even know who was going to take the last few spots, especially after Chris Sale went down with an injury and then suffered his setback. But everyone seems to be finding the the groove at the right time and helping the Red Sox continue to get wins. And nothing better now than going into a series against the Angels, who have lost 11 in a row. Continue that momentum to beat up on a team that just cannot win for the life of them right now. So Chris Sale has been sidelined. He suffered the stress fracture before spring training started. And then he suffered a non-COVID setback in May, I believe it was. But it never kind of impacted his timeline. It was always June. And then it got pushed a little bit to later June instead of earlier June. And he's been rehabbing. He's been working hard to get back to the rotation and he will throw a live batting practice on Friday and then probably head for a rehab assignment, I'm assuming in Worcester, but it could be in Portland as well. Late June is likely when he'll return, but Alex Cora has yet to give a, an actual timeline, an actual return date. And you never know, setbacks still could happen. So right now, plan for Chris Sale to throw a live BP on Friday, head to Portland or Worcester for a rehab assignment and then return to Boston. But I think the biggest question re regarding Chris Sale's return is where does he belong in this rotation? Because you have, I just read the the last, the last time the starters went through one through five, they have a 20.29 ERA. Do you want to mess up that chemistry that maybe they have going if they're still continuing to be strong when Chris Sale is ready to return or do you just put Chris Sale in the bullpen? And they haven't ruled that out. Alex Cora has said that they haven't ruled putting him as a reliever. And maybe that's the smart move. You don't mess up what the starting pitchers have going right now. You get Chris Sale a little more stretched out and maybe give him the opportunity to thrive as a reliever. Maybe you put him as a closer, then all of a sudden the others have defined roles. High and Bloom spoke earlier last, last week or the week before saying that they, they know they need bullpen help, and some of it could be consistency and guys not knowing what their defined role is. So if one person has a defined role, the rest will follow. So we'll see where he ends up going. I think it's going to be very interesting, especially if the starting pitchers continue to be as good as they have been the last few weeks. Because we all know Chris Sale. We know what he can bring. He hasn't been healthy the last two or three seasons. And hopefully he can return to 2018 Chris Sale. I think fans would be very happy with that. But if you can have the starters do continue to do what they're doing and then have Chris Sale in for the last three to six outs, this might be 
a match made in heaven that we didn't know we needed after all. Coming up in our third segment of the Locked on Red Sox podcast, as always, we will end this show on the Mental Health Minute. But first, I just want to tell you about Bet Online because BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup between my Boston Celtics, our Boston Celtics, and the Golden State Warriors. Golden State did tie the series on Sunday night with a big dominant win. The NHL Conference Finals, hopefully the Avs can sweep the Edmonton Oilers tonight, and hopefully the Rangers can take a commanding 3-1 lead on Tuesday. Major League Baseball, and of course, the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. Bet Online is your continued source for all the sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and so much more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. So, as always, we're going to end this show on the Mental Health Minute. I want to shout out my co host, the Massachusetts Pirates team insider, Jake Ignazuski. He traveled to New Mexico with the Pirates as they continue their season and fight for a spot in the playoffs. He got home very early Monday morning. So hopefully he's using this time to regroup and reset and prepare for this really fun West Coast road trip. But for many of you who have followed me for a long time, you probably know how much I love hockey. I cover a majority of the Bruins season when they are in season. But just because they're out of the playoffs does not mean that I'm not watching. Like I said, if you followed me for a long time, you know that I do enjoy watching the Colorado Avalanche. And that stems from my brother and I being younger and playing NHL on like the first PlayStation or Sega or Nintendo, whatever it was. And he would always choose the Bruins to be his team. And he was like, you can't have the Bruins. You have to pick a different team. So I picked the Colorado Avalanche and they've always been kind of my second, my go-to Western Conference team, if you will. And that was during a time it was Adam Foote, Patrick Waugh, Joe Sackick. They were all on the Avalanche. So at like eight or nine years old, I knew all these random Avalanche players had a Colorado Avalanche starter jacket. So just, I'm really excited to see that they have the opportunity to sweep the Oilers. It's a shame that it comes at the expense of Connor McDavid because he deserves so much more than what Edmonton has given him these last few seasons. But my heart is with the Avalanche, and I'm so excited I get to just relax, watch the game tonight, and then by the time it's over, we'll be in like the third inning of the Red Sox game, so it is a win-win situation all around. Go Avs, let's get to the Stanley Cup final. That will do it for today's second episode this lovely Monday of the Locked on Red Sox podcast. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe right here on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Wherever you get your podcast is where you can find us. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox. Me at la 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 Lauren, three laws, Lauren of four R's, Jake at Jake Iggy. And be sure to follow all the other Locked on MLB shows. Locked on Prospects, Locked on Yankees, Locked on Angels, Locked on Orioles. Everyone does such a great job here. And now that you've made Locked on Red Sox your first listen, be sure to make Locked on MLB your second listen. Friend of the pod, friend of mine, Paul Francis Sullivan, but please just call him Sully. We'll take you through his unique perspective of major leaguers, both past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Have a great day. Enjoy the weather if you're in Boston. It is absolutely beautiful. Get ready for another West Coast swing. We will be back this week to recap everything you need to know about the Red Sox and Angels. Until then, let's go Red Sox.